you up in the morning at the boat ramp. What's going on y'all? Captain Collier here. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Brandon. I fish here along the Alabama Gulf Coast as well as run charters. You may have noticed that I haven't been uploading in a while and that's for a couple reasons. Mainly because I haven't had a boat and uh, you'll see that we are standing on the new boat. If y'all have seen from the title of this video, I've finally got my new boat that I've been waiting for 18 months for. And uh, the second reason is because as you can see, it has been blowing non-stop here along the coast for it seems like weeks and it's just been super hard to get out here and fish but we're out here right now we're actually not going to fish today i'm going to take y'all along a walk through the brand new blackjack 256 coastal that i've just purchased i gotta say i'm in love with it right now i love the layout of this boat we're going to go ahead and start with the bow here i opted with the Minn Kota spot lock troll motor and what's different about this one is this has the uh, the satellite puck in the head of the troll motor so you don't have to connect to anything else for it to grab the satellite signal for the spot lock feature. I do have a little mount here to keep that nice and steady for if we're in some rough water or chop going offshore. And I think this is a 72 inch possibly. It's, it's a definitely a longer shaft because this boat does have a higher bow to it. And uh, we'll go to the anchor locker here. Large access. I don't know how many feet of rope you can put in there, but it's a lot. And uh, they were nice enough to give me an anchor. I will rarely use that. Got a battery tender troll motor plug, easy to access and clean and get the corrosion off if it does get any salt water on it. Got us a nice flip up cleat here. Moving on to the bow here, we've got two large hatches. All the hatches on this boat are insulated, which is very nice. So you can kind of put fish or drinks in. I will probably use one of these hatches for fish. You can see right now, we just got some tackle bags and whatnot in there. They all have courtesy lights in the hatches. <sighs> really, really big hatches. You can you can fit a lot of fish in there, a lot of ice and uh, long fish too. So whenever we go offshore, we can put key mackerel, amberjack, wahoo. Hopefully we can get on some of those this year and put those in there no problem unless we just get an absolute giant. But real nice quality hatches. We've got a, a front live well here. This is a pressurized live well, clear lid. I opted for a bubbler in there as well that has a, a live well light in it too. Got a, another hatch in the, in the deck. This hatch doesn't look very big, but it goes back a pretty good ways. This one's insulated as well. This will probably be the hatch that I put most of my fish in on my trips. And as y'all can see, there are plenty of rod holders along the gunnel here. We've got two on the bow two right here. I think we counted 36, 37 rod holders all together on this boat, which is fantastic. You don't have to worry about not bringing enough rods. You can just bring them all, have something rigged up for everything. And these two right here on each side are actually for backrests. I did not go with that package for this boat. You can put cushions on the bow here. Y'all, this is a fishing boat. We go fishing. So there's no need for that. Uh, you know, like I said, it's a fishing boat, so we didn't need it. We've got cup holders here. We've got some access hatches, saltwater wash down hose here. This is really nice. Got plenty of pressure and get all the blood off the deck. We've got two, I think these are 7.7 .7 JL subwoofers up here. This boat's rigged out with a, a nice JL audio package. I've got an amp power on these two speakers. And then also the four in the top. We've got two here and two in the back back there. We've got spreader lights on the T-top, front and back, one here on the bow. There's two on the back. Moving on to the console here. So this is the large center console on this Blackjack. This boat actually came with a 75 quart Yeti cooler. Um, huge, huge cooler. I'm not used to having a big cooler. You can put a ton of drinks and food in there. And this cooler actually slides out. It's got a pin here you can pick up. You just move that cooler out of the way. You've got easy access to your center console here. And y'all check this out. This is one of my favorite features of this boat right here. When I ordered from Metro Boating in Harvey, Louisiana, they are known for their great wiring. And tell y'all what, they did an excellent job at the wiring in this boat. 
everything is just so neatly organized labeled i've got three batteries for the 36 volt chola motor this is the house and starting battery and you actually have the option to pull power for one of these batteries in case that one gets low to start your engine but yeah really great layout easy to get to if you do have to change any fuses or reset any breakers really really love it and then also we have a little lift up hatch here where i've got my trolling motor charger and i believe this is the power yeah the power steering pump is right here on this side and uh, you can also fit some some other stuff in here if you need to just for storage purposes let's go to the back of the boat so as mentioned before we've got a ton of rod holders we've got four on each side hole is in the t-top so the rod tips can go through all right so moving on to the helm i've got this boat rigged up with just about everything you can think of and that i use out here on the water all the time so went with twin 12 inch simrad units these are nss evo threes it's going to take some time to get used to learning these uh, these units here they've got a lot of features a lot of options and um, i've got two transducers i've got a three in one side scan down imaging transducer and then i also have a through hole transducer it's a one kilowatt b175 high wide for whenever we go offshore you can really make out what's on the bottom and uh, actually read depth in deep water and i'll get to that whenever we move to the back of the boat but we've got the twin screens here we've got our power poles which is what's holding us in place right now in the back i've never had power poles before but I can tell y'all from the little amount of time that I've been using this boat, I'm in love with them and it's game changer out here inshore, at least. This boat with the Mercury 300 came with a uh, screen here, shows all your gauges, your speed, your fuel, and some other cool features for this motor. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. We've got a hydraulic jack plate. I believe this is a Bob's jack plate. Uh, you can raise it up in shallow water, six, up to six inches. We've got our Linko trim tabs here. JL audio system, as mentioned before, this is the Media Master 50. Uh, you, everything on this dash is connected via NEMA 2000 system. So you can pull up your audio here. You can play your music. You can actually pull it up on your Mercury screen here. And uh, just everything's connected. Uh, we've got our VHF here, Simrad again. And this boat actually went with autopilot. So I've got my autopilot pump in the console. The trips that I've been making offshore with other people, most of them have autopilot and it's just game changer out there to just set it to a point and just let the boat drive itself. Obviously paying attention to where you're going, but you don't actually have to manually drive the boat. And so that's gonna be a nice feature for us. We've got all our rocker switches here, We've got the horn, nav lights bilge I actually have two bilge pumps in this boat in case one goes out our live well lights pretty self-explanatory got our steering wheel this is a digital throttle for the motor and i'll tell y'all what this throttle is really smooth tanner's holding the camera behind us he about threw me off the boat about five minutes ago <laughs> trying to put us in reverse and uh it's got a push start you can push start it or you can use the key to start it as well and uh, what's really cool about this motor is it has two uh, I guess sounds to it it's got a sports exhaust mode and it has a eco or normal motor mode and so I'm going to go ahead and start this engine for y'all and let y'all see the difference it's uh, it's got more of a throaty sound to the sport exhaust mode so we're going to go ahead and start it on the not as loud mode So as you can see, it's really quiet. You really don't even know it's on, especially with the wind blowing and whatnot. And so we're gonna go ahead and swap it over to the sports exhaust mode. So that doesn't really affect the fuel economy or anything. That's just something cool you can do at the ramp, I guess, to impress your buddies and show the sound. But here's the sport exhaust mode. You can just turn it on and off right there. You've got all kinds of functions there. So moving on to the backrest here, this lifts up. 
It's got a little button you can lift up. Plenty of storage space. I've got my GoPro stuff in here. I've got leader material, jigs, knives. Good little spot there just to put anything you want to keep dry, wallets, keys, and whatnot. You also got a little hatch here. This is where I'll be putting most of my chart plotter covers and radio covers and VHF covers and stuff in there. But you do have room if you want to put maybe a small purse or wallets in there. Going to both sides of this Lena post here. This boat came with four Plano boxes on each side. Put all your tackle and stuff. I haven't quite rigged them up the way I want just yet, just because I haven't made many trips on this boat. But I do love that you have plenty of easy access to all your tackle. Going on back, we've got two rod holders, or I'm, I'm sorry, two cup holders, four rod holders on this leaning post, and a very large live well that has two pumps going to it. It has a fill pump and it has a recirculating pump. And uh, like I said, this is a super huge live well. I don't know how many baits we can put in there and keep alive, but it's a lot. We need to black her out. Yeah, we do. On to the back here, we've got another in deck hatch, easy access. It's got a bucket here. Easy access to all your pumps here if you have to do any maintenance or replace any. You got your fuel water separator. Uh, and this is a Airmar B, I'm sorry, the SS 175 high wide through hole transducer that we're going to use when we go offshore and stuff. And uh, just super clean, still got that new boat smell. And it came with a bucket, so that's cool. Put your casting in there if you need to. We've got three hatches in the back, back here. Open these up. These are the power pole pumps. I don't think there's any maintenance really that you have to do with these, but you got plenty of space if you want to maybe put some offshore weights and stuff in the back, back here, or I guess you could probably put life jackets as well. All right, moving on to the motor here. I've always been a Yamaha guy, never had a Mercury before, but I've heard some really good things about this motor. And so far, the amount of time that I've used it, breaking it in, I'm really impressed with this motor. This is a V8 300 horsepower Mercury Verado. It's got plenty of torque, super powerful. It's also great with the fuel economy. I've seen up to 3.8 miles to the gallon at cruise on this boat and top end speed so far I've seen 55 mile an hour. So 300 horsepower motor on almost a 26 foot boat. It's pretty much crazy and especially getting that good of gas mileage. Uh, hopefully it, it does good for us. I think it will. I think time will tell and as long as you do your uh, regular 100 hour and 300 hour services on the motor, I think it'll be good for us. And as mentioned before, I've got two eight foot power poles here. Like I said, I've been in love with these since I've been using them, never had them before. They're holding us in, in place with a 15, maybe 20 mile an hour wind and no problem. And uh, so really happy to be using those. Got a nice little ladder here for them days we go to the beach or if I have any divers that want to go off accidentally out of the boat and get back in, you got a ladder there that folds in and out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking about the homeless guy holding the camera. <laughs> And so going to the top of the T-top pier, we've got four rocket launcher rod holders. We've got our navigation light, our stern light, and uh, we've got the four foot VHF antenna. And y'all know I got my Simrad radar. This is the 20 inch Halo Plus. Uh, I've never used that radar before, but I've heard some really good things, good reviews on it. Have yet to try it out but I, I assume it would be just as good as my Garmin radar that I've had on my Sea Hunt previously. All right, y'all, I think that just about wraps it up for the walkthrough of this boat. This boat's gonna open up some possibilities for some, some more offshore action, so I hope y'all are ready for that. If y'all haven't subscribed to the channel, y'all be sure to do that if y'all enjoy all types of saltwater fishing. And uh, if y'all have any ideas for a name for this boat, y'all please drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear some names maybe even pick one and slap it on the side of this blackjack here but me and my buddy tanner and barney we're actually fixing a hopefully go shoot a, a fishing video maybe do a catch and cook so hopefully we can get on some fish y'all stay safe we'll see you back out on the next one